They enhance this experience without even knowing it, hugely. Yeah? So my, my natural inclination is I feel everyone has a right to hear it. I don't care if you like it or not, but I think I, you have a right to hear it. Yeah? I'd like to make that available. Because out of 80 people, maybe 78 don't like it, but those two that do, it's an incredible, valuable thing, or no thing, really, yeah? This isn't about, this is definitely not a good industry, you know, not a good career choice, because my whole point is to become obsolete. I'm just a pointer, just like all those thoughts are in your head as a pointer. I'm just attempting to point at something that's not a thought, you know? Prior to the thoughts prior to the idea of being a thinker of that. And I, hopefully I run out of clientele. It'd be great. Hopefully they have a, like a, an obsolete teacher's old home, you know, like their <laughs> I can, you know, they'll send some people, they pay them to listen to me to keep my enthusiasm up. <laughs> but man, it's not a good career choice because I hope, you know, you should be done with me sooner or later. It doesn't mean you won't come here, but your whole attitude will be different. You'll be enjoying it and just enjoy the space, not keenly trying to... I have people write stuff down. Give me a fucking break. This is... Don't, you don't need to write anything down. What's going to be gotten will be gotten. You don't have to try to get it down. Oh, sorry. I saw you. <laughs> I'm only joking anyway. Whatever helps. But then remember when it stops helping. Mm -hmm. See, things can be very helpful because we, are f we find helpers, yeah? But they're not lifelong companions a lot of time. <coughs> sort of something will happen, it will trigger something, and that lock will release. You don't have to keep sticking a key in there. You move on, yeah? yeah. I have a, a lock. This is why I'm writing. Yeah. In our experience of reality, are we creating it or through interpretation? Or are we ahead of our experience of reality? So are we creating it through our... You're not creating it. This isn't real. This is made. By this is a dream. There's no who involved in it. It's just dreaming. Yeah? This is not a reality. This is an appearance in reality. Yes? Reality is not a thing. Mm -hmm. So then, it's, then we're constantly interpreting Dream. You're not. The mental process is interpreting it. But all the while, you're an interface to it mm -hmm. at the same time. You may, you may just be listening more to the interpretation than to the silence. Yeah. And when, when we're aware of that, why do we still get caught up? Because it's a habit. Mm -hmm. The mental process has an agenda that it's construed as yours, but it has nothing to do with what you are. Mm -hmm. When we learn to operate beyond the habit, then we're operating from a space of flow or when the personal touches the universal or something. It's a definition I heard. I, I kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. But you, you've heard of the word flow. I would say I would put universal as the primary position and then okay. the personal as an expression, not the personal touches the universal. <laughs> that sounds like you again. Yeah. But I don't, I don't like that to say it that much. So, for example, when you're talking, you're obviously operating from the universal. But then how do we do that? <laughs> well, or, considering we haven't done it, nor will we be doing it, it's more of a, a recognition of the absence of what you're taking to be present. Yeah? The absence can happen all of a sudden because that's its nature, or you'll just lose interest in what's projecting the false presence, and then you'll see through it. Yeah? That's what happens. Your interest and attention you lose interest in this event called Paul because it's not you, yeah? And then, released from that bondage, it probably will search out more of what you really are. And so now your interest and attention may rest in what not, doesn't seem to be going on here. But because it doesn't seem to be going on here, it doesn't mean it's not always going on here. Because the way we look at things, we don't recognize what's always happening. We only recognize what happens, yeah? We need gaps to recognize things. What's so is always so. That's why we're not picking it up. Just like gravity. If people, if you're at this cafe today, not one person in this whole state of California has talked about the effects of gravity on them today. 
and I, oh, my shoulder, it was really, t took a personal vendetta on me today. And then when we met, we walk up a hill, we think the hill is too steep, but it's gravity, really. It's gravity, yeah. So gravity seems to have a huge influence on the body, but we are no we're not noticing it at all. The only way you would notice it is if you went into an anti-gravity chamber, and then by its absence would you know it, yeah? That's the same thing. When you sense the presence, you'll realize the absence. Yeah? And you'll know the false presence by its absence. You'll be in the sense of presence then. And from there, you'll know the problem. And from there, the problem is imaginary. So even though the solution is truly needed when the problem seems real, when it dawns on you, the true nature of the problem is that it's unreal. There's no need for a solution either. That's freedom. You're out of the problem-solution ratio. Mm -hmm. Yes? But then can you still create from that point? You don't create here, remember. It's making. We're making things up. Things here reach a level called seemingly so. Yep. They appear to be true or false to us. Yeah? They can't be real, but they can appear to be real to what's real. So we're the dreaming, we're the dreaming, and we're looking at what we're dreaming, like the Course in Miracles puts it in a beautiful way. It says, you and I are the dreamer of the dream. Yeah? I don't even like to use the dreamer because that implies that there's a subject or a noun. Let's say you and I are the dreaming of the dream. We forgot that we're dreaming, and how do we forget? I'm saying we forget by remembering we're the dreamt object. This is a dreamt object. This can be seen here, yes? Like Huang Po said, he had a beautiful, an old Zen master, he had a beautiful ruler, and he says, whatever can be perceived, can't be perceiving. Yes? So whatever can be thought about, can't be thinking. <laughs> it goes on and on. So, so, yes? So in this statement, it says, you and I are the dreamer of the dream. We forgot that we're dreaming, and I'm saying that's an act of forgetfulness by an act of remembering of what we're not. Yeah? So, okay, so as we forget the dream that we're dreaming, we've given everything we've dreamt the power to affect us, yeah? The effects don't actually touch us, but they touch, they touch what we think we are. This is a dreamt object, yes? But I crown this dreamt object just like I see a body over there and I call it you, 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 you and everyone here sees this body as a you, I beg to differ. In my head, it's a me. It's crowned as a special someone. Yes. This is the this is the this is the altar of selfing. All the devotion, all of the all of the believing those crazy thoughts that produce all the anxiety, are worshiping at that temple. The idea of me. Yes. This is like dethroning that. So maybe it collapses on you. You're just a you. And then it goes like this, and then you realize I'm not that you, and then woo! Yeah. This is the last thing you want to be as a you, because there's a lot of yous you don't like. Look at that you. Look at that, this 80-year-old you. Oh, I don't want to look like that you when I'm that age. I mean, there's a lot of dislike for yous, baby. But a me gets a little bit of a, a like a, a reprieve from that. And it's very difficult when you are seen suddenly, having seen everything from the point of view of me, when a, someone seeing you as a you overrides that. It's very deflating, isn't it? Fuck, it's usually incredibly deflating. So the me gets like popped and it, oh, it feels like you're dying when you're identified as it. Yeah, because you don't want to be a you as all these yous, the yous you've hated, the yous you've left, the yous you do look like this, yeah? But you are as this, yeah? The mental process just, uh, produces a false immunity to this revelation by the me. Yes, it's a fucking story. If you let that go and drop into the you, and it seems all right, it's like the death, but in fact it's the rebirth, like they say, because you realize, oh, I'm all this, I'm all this, and I'm not. Instead of, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, and I'm acting like I am all day. I'm this, I'm this, and, that, and I'm not. And then it's done. Some fucking real relief occurs. Yes? This urban renewal project gets shut down. You fucking stop working on yourself all day. I'm not killing anybody. You know, I'm not running, 
producing too much drama. I don't need to be hyper-observant of the action figure. <laughs> I don't. Before, when I needed to be hyper-observant, I wasn't. When I was killing, shooting people, and running around like crazy, it would have been nice if there was some observation. But now that I don't need observation, I'm hyper-observant. What are they, do they like, <laughs> give me a fucking break. It'll go on, it'll incessantly go on unless that construction site's closed. If it's you, there's going to be fault found. If it's you, there's going to be need for improvement. It's going to go on and on and on and on and on. It's a form of slavery. Yeah, I'm not fucking up with too many things. I don't, oh, I've got to go over everything I did today. What? <laughs> Give me a freaking break. If someone read my day's story, it would be boring as hell. But the fact is, I don't need to do exciting things much anymore because I'm excited. <laughs> I'm enthused. Seriously. I mean, something I really love, I can't do for a while. A couple of things. And it was like cut off very quickly. I was doing it, and then it got cut off. I can't surf. You know, you can get over anything. <coughs> so your mind's much more flexible than you think. You know, all these donkeys you pin the tail on, and they'll all trot away sooner or later. <laughs> you just always go back to what you are, not who you're not. You know, it's, it's boring. What you are is undisturbed, literally. Literally undisturbed. In a sense, I really believe, I could be crazy, but in a sense, there's a true feeling that nothing ever really happened here. Mm -hmm. It's just an appearance, yeah? What cannot be disturbed has never been disturbed here, ever. You've been, you know, you, the body, you, the me has, the, you know, the, the, the phantom has been disturbed quite a lot. Mostly about the you, really. <laughs> it's fucking, it's identified as a body, but it hates the body. It's too limiting, yeah? So, I don't know. Just entertain it if you like. You're fine, bro, I'm telling you. You're very earnest, which is good. And then you're very earnest, which isn't good. <laughs> Stick around us. We'll break that earnestness. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's much more uh, relaxed awareness, like in Dokchen, they say, Buddhist, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, great perfection. The aperture opens up. It doesn't have to be focused and concentrated. It sees a lot more when it's relaxed and open. You get a much giant field of vision than when you're looking intently. When you're looking intently, you're blind to quite a lot. Yeah? When you're open, you can see a lot. Yeah. This is more about that. You know, earnestness is good, but it will lead to a deep relaxation when it's finally given up. And there's, there's no rush. It's, it's great. It's being used to do exactly what it's meant to do. Yeah. Like we say in recovery, rule 62, don't take yourself so seriously. Yeah. Weren't you taking yourself seriously when you're a spiritual practitioner? I was, man. Fuck. <laughs> Jeez, don't don't fuck with my creed. Don't fuck with my dogma. <laughs> the dogma. You know what I mean? Jeez. Jesus Christ. This is messy. I say a lot of shit I don't really mean, just to bother people. <laughs> you know, if I, if I'm, if I, someone walks in and I can sense their, uh, you know, they've got an investment in meditation, I just say something about that. I don't really care, but just to bother people, because uh, irritation sometimes necessary. This lovey dovey, go get comfortable. It's that sometimes when you hear something, a lot of times it's not comfortable. Yeah, because what squirms is what you're not. It tries to squirm out of the light. It tries to slither away. It's nice to get it caught, you know? Yeah, why be so invested in its protection and its survival? Its gain is your loss in a way, in a sense. Yeah, as an action figure. So that's it. I don't know if I recorded that last part. <laughs> Someone recorded it. I may I got need it. this. Yeah. You sure. Can you send it to me? Yeah. No problem. All right. <laughs> Just don't drop it. Yeah. There's only two oh. allotment for the night. So this Still going. Still right. going. <laughs> so the... Hasn't it been enough, though, really? Yeah. Here you go. Can't put it out any better. <laughs> go ahead. All yeah, right. That's what's right. the next what's the question? Yeah. The mental process, like, but not you, does it... 
convince this like does it convince who you really are to identify? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I think the the mind is enjoying it in some respect, but then it's also it's sort of like uh, it may get to the point of not enjoying it, but the momentum is there. And so it's still run. It's still expressing in manifestation. Yeah, it's picked up some speed. So you may want to get out of it, but now at that point you can't seem to get out of it. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. I find it's it it runs into a statement in Buddhism called cherishing the self. There's a large part of your mental process that cherishes this little making. You're in love with it. Yeah. And some of that has to be broken in a sense. Sometimes this happens through disillusionment, you know. You know there's a lot of things that can occur that can break that sort of uh, bond to it, you know, weaken it. And then the mind hears an in invitation, and of course, it's a, its nature is to entertain. It starts entertaining that, and it's like say, Ramana Maharshi said, it's too late now, your head is in the tiger's mouth, yeah? So, mm -hmm. The mind, you know, chews too much and then it's a done deal. Yes? Yeah, yeah. So in other words, the gig is over in a way. So the mind gets in, uninterested in this event. It's still here, and, but it's using it for totally different reasons now. Not to achieve anything, but to express. Yes? Totally. Things change quite a lot. Yeah, you may look like you're doing the same thing, but the whole state of mind you're in while it's happening is totally different. To me, I see everything as an expression, not as a, an achieving or trying to attain anything. It's just mind expressing in various ways. Yeah? Sometimes it expresses clarity, sometimes it expresses compassion, sometimes it expresses anger, tons of things. Yeah? I don't see any big, there's no taboos in a way. Yes? Yeah. All right, that's it, I think. We're going to pass the basket, yeah, yeah, did yeah. we? So anyone wants some, one of these lovely doc, uh, documentaries? <laughs> we got a special deal Stuff today. Ten dollars. Very good. And t-shirts. If anyone's interested in a t-shirt, uh, hopefully you're more interested in me trying to sell them. But I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yes. My little dancing Buddha. My, I mean, dancing monk. This is one of my first shirts. Nowhere else will you find one of these. You could be the first person in your neighborhood. First They'll all special. say it's a Buddha and then you can correct them. No, it's a monk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's it, eh? You want to end with a prayer? We like to say a prayer from recovery, if you like. Oh, man. The basket? Okay. <sighs> Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> oh, sorry, we just do a prayer called the serenity prayer so you can just follow us it's the we versions which it goes uh, God, God uh, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference keep coming back it works yes <laughs> I'll take a shirt, Paul. What? I'd like a shirt. All right, Chris. We gotta see what size you may need.